a ridiculous amount of almost 300 pounds. And I know I saw in his face in the interview that you did with him uh, on Thursday night. <laughs> I said, this guy looks like a fat man. He's going to do terrible. What the hell did you guys do in, in two days to this guy? Because you turned him into a world beater. You know, he 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 just he 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 holds a disproportionate amount of water in his face, which is funny. Uh, but you know, I, I think he he genuinely came to the show in the high two eighties, two ninety one, and then he probably he I I know he was two eighty one or two eighty the day of the show, so he dropped ten or eleven, twelve, maybe even thirteen in the last four days, which you know people keep saying like, oh, that's a lot. Well. You know, for people who are 180 drop down to 170 all the time. So it's really not that much, right? I mean, it's 12 pounds, but for, for someone who's up in the you know high 280s, it's it's not a lot. So let's say he dropped 12. It's normal. I got to ask look, a I, I would say, Dave, what, I, I, when people said, you know, what's he look like? Jay asked me, how's Cedric looking? You know, just a vague, you know, like, how's the weather? He knows I'm there with Cedric. I said, you know what? He looks like an elephant. <laughs> that's that's what what he looked like me in the room you know that round and that big yeah now you know cedric uh, was playing around arnold schwarzenegger has got this new thing john where he likes to like tweet things and do snapchats in the middle of like the show so he stood up at uh, in the middle center stage there and he was like while cedric was doing his routine because he loves cedric and he was like i don't know if he was filming on his phone if he was snapchatting whatever he was doing and cedric leaned over and Put up the like the rabbit ears behind Arnold's head, and then he rubbed his head or tapped him in the head. <laughs> who who could get away with doing that, right, John? Of course. I mean, the the guy who says that you know he he, sh he had him picked to win, you know, you know that's uh, that kind of gives him entrance into the club. But you know, look, Arnold, there is no greater practical joker on the face of this earth let alone our sport, than Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, uh, you know, go all the way back to the days of his, you know, his crew in World Gym, you know, with their homophobic banter and, you know, <laughs> calling each other girls' names and, you know. Um, so for Cedric to, to, to joke around with Arnold, I mean, that's, that's what puts Arnold right at home with the rest of us. He's, he is, Arnold is one of us, and yeah. that's a, a poignant moment that, Proved the point. I, I don't think Arnold would just let anyone get away with this, though. I really believe he likes Cedric so much that Cedric's immune. Yeah. Because Cedric actually said to him on stage, and, and I quote, uh, you know, usually Arnold interviews the winner at the end. And Arnold's out there, and, and Cedric's got the microphone. And Cedric's like, wait a minute. I, I'm not ready for you to ask me. I know you want to tell me all these little witty witty jokes and everything like that. but but And those funny things you say, but you, hold off. And he actually put shut Arnold down, which was great because Arnold didn't take offense to it, obviously. But it was it was no. he stole the show. Like Cedric said, well, basically, I want this to be my show, and I'm I have a. It was like he rehearsed a an acceptance speech ahead of time, and I actually asked him about that, and he said to me, he goes, "This has been five years in the coming." The speech. Once Chris Chris knows this. Once Arnold lets you in the club. And, and you get your own nickname, you're you're in. I mean, it's that's that's it. So you know, obviously Cedric is Cedric is in the club, and so he's in there with you know Arnold's crew. That and he deserves to be. Dave, don't forget there there is that video out there where Arnold and his people came to see Cedric, and they they I don't know if you ever saw it. Yes, I did. Cedric had got second in Australia, mm -hmm. and he approached Cedric and says something to him you can't really make it out and Ar and cedric says something back to him and arnold's head falls back in laughter so much he almost collapsed you know so <laughs> obviously cedric can make arnold laugh and you know cedric when he can make someone laugh you know he he, he puts a full court press on you i mean well, you, you, that's why i said when i when i take his calls i have to be ready for him because i i lose my breath well Ced <laughs> cedric pulls that that dumb that dumb act, like he's dumb country, you know, but he's really smarter than everyone. Oh, yeah. So he plays possum a lot of times. And I think that uh, <laughs> he uses his like, well, I'm just a dumb country guy, you know. I live in the back country, cook my barbecue. But, but he knows everything that's going on. He, has, he is an observer. He knows every detail of everyone's shtick. He can pick up my mannerisms. He knows all the facial movements I make because I, I watch him imitate to me. 
he he's such an observer of of society. That that that's it, Dave. You know, I I always tell people I said you know what he can make people laugh uh, any any race any culture any religion any socioeconomic ladder because he's very aware of his surroundings and he he has this odd ability to to empathize or uh, you know feel what other people are feeling and his his timing on humor is perfect you know yeah. it's, it's as as seen on you know with Arnold on stage you got 3000 4000 people looking at you you just won the show and here he is like impeccable not only funny but the it, the timing of it all is what made it perfect now, John, we um, we talked earlier in the week. Uh, we did an iron debate last week about you know uh, where Dallas McCarver would fall, or it might have been two weeks ago if we thought he was all hype. Obviously, he showed up here at this show and and really sh- stifled all of us because he looked that good. He came in full hard. His back looked good. His posing was much better than the Olympia. He looked like a real professional, consummate professional at age twenty five up there. Um, I'm sure you've seen the pictures by now. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a blowout by any means. Cedric won, but but you know, definitely Dallas pushed him. What was what's your impression now of Dallas McCarver? I I've always been a pro Dallas McCarver. I've, I've I when he first came out, I thought this guy, we need a new monster, and you know that's that, that's what he is. He is a freaking three hundred pounder man. So, you know. That's what this sport should be about, you know. It's the it's the giants, uh, at least in the open division. I mean, I love two twelve, but you know, if, if I'm in the watch in the open, I want to see big gnarly dudes, you know, battling it out. So this is bodybuilding, ain't it? As Ronnie Coleman would say. So when I, when you know you get two guys, you know, Cedric, you know, two eighty ish, and you know, uh, uh, Dallas, what two ninety ish? What do you think Dallas weighed? I mean, the p- comparable. Comparable giant guys going head to head. That's what you want to see. It's like it's like watching MotoGP, watching Lorenzo and, and Rossi, you know, battle it out in the curbs. You know, so right. you, you want to see that. And I, and I was I thought Dallas McCarver was going to shoot up, you know, and be a sensation the, the first day I saw him. And so um, he, he's well on his way. You know, you're right. It wasn't a blowout, but um, I, look, I thought he looked great. I, that's what I want to see. Well, Chris, you and I um, b- have, were pretty harsh on Dallas, you know, after, especially after that, the video he was posing for Jim Mannion uh, that time, he, uh, about a week out from or about 10 days out from the show. Uh, a lot of people were very critical of him. He definitely did bring it. I, I was sitting with Chad Nichols in the airport on Sunday morning at about 5 in the morning. We were all pretty much blown out from the weekend. And we were talking about it. He said that Dallas weighed uh, 287 pounds on stage. Uh, do you think that's an accurate assessment? Yeah, I think that's an accurate assessment. I, I think uh, Dallas um, couldn't have been better at the show, meaning, you know, he was full, he was hard. Um, everything improved in terms of his leg separation was much better than it's been in the past, I thought. Um, his presentation, the way he had his poses, I thought were much better than, than in the past. Uh, he was aggressive on stage, which was good. You know, he was in great shape. Uh, and, you know, just go go back into shows that we've done. I, I, I've been critical of him because just so many people come out, you know, they're supposed to be the next big thing and they falter. Um, and this was a show that proved that he's uh, a threat to win, you know, any show that he decides to enter going forward. You know, with the, the exception of, let's say, the Olympia or maybe this show. But he, he could certainly win, like, an Arnold Asia easy you know, Arnold Brazil, if he goes, you know, it depends on how other people's condition is. Uh, but you can tell uh, he dropped the hammer for the show and went in all out and it paid off for him. Yeah, you know, um, I think that uh, Dallas has pretty much come into his own now. And I think that, you know, we're going to see him get better and better and better from here. It's interesting that Cedric McMillan won with straight unanimous first place. Is not just in the finals and the prejudging, but also in the routine round. And when I looked across the scorecards, which I have now, I could see that every single bodybuilder scored the same thing pretty much round one, two, and three, which leads me to believe that the, the, the posing round was probably not scored like it was last year, according to entertainment value, because 
everyone had the same score throughout, you know, all three rounds. Uh, now, granted, there wasn't a lot of guys in the lineup, and it was pretty unanimous in terms of who we thought was going to be in what place, you know. Um, I, I don't think anyone would pretty much argue with that top five. It was pretty set in stone. But Cedric, you know, obviously, according to the judges, were, had a unanimous win. And I think that that's an important point to make because a lot of people thought it was close. But it might have been close, but it wasn't close enough that any single judge thought that Cedric didn't deserve it. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was, uh, it was was a two-man show. And, I mean, I, I thought this type of Cedric, this, this type of Cedric, let's just face it, it's, it's uh, you know, Lee Haney said years ago, I remember on this video, Mother Nature only whoops up someone like me once in a, you know, once in a blue moon. And I think this is, you know, Cedric looks, with the shape that he has, looks so massive and dominating on stage. It's just insane. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, he, he's he got the, the weight on him, 281. He's got the height. He's got the flow. He's got the flow. You can't stop saying he's got the flow. It's so unique on stage at, at that type of body weight. Because usually when people get up to that type of body weight, you know, Goodbye lines. Right. You know what I mean? Something suffers. He, you know what, but Cedric is in the right era, and I think that's an important point to, to make. Because if Cedric had this physique in 1990, I don't know if he would even make the top five. You know, I don't know if he, they would let him beat the likes, because they, they were going for that mass monsterish look. You know, would he have beat a Nasser at his best? Would he have beat Coleman? Would he have beat uh, Flex Wheeler? I don't know. What, what do you think, John? Well, I, I don't think you could put, you know, Flex Wheeler and, and uh, no, well, you know, if, if you're talking about, you know, the mass monster freak, you know, a la Dorian and, and uh, you know, in that era, you know, or after Dorian, um, you know, we had Ronnie and, you know, the, the, the legendary battle, you know, in 98 with uh, Flex and, and, and Coleman. Could I see Cedric in the in the middle of that? I, I I think I really could. I think he fits. I think he'd fit in there. You know, you'd have, you know, lines. Who had better lines than Flex? And you know, the 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 mass of Coleman. So I think I don't know. I think Cedric would have fit in there. I don't I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if I don't think I would agree with that. I think Cedric would fit right in there, if not be overqualified. What do you think, Chris? Um, I, I think that Cedric would beat these guys. You know, I, I, I'm over this 1990 stuff because of, the guys look tremendous, but they, you know what? They'll tell you they weren't that big, some of them. I mean, you know, I, I put that Cedric front double vice up, up against Wheeler and I beat him every time. Really? It's 281, wow. 280. Yeah, what was Flex? 230, 240? I mean, the weight, the weight counts for something. It's just, you know, it's not like you're talking about some guy from Europe who's 281 and he's, you know... <laughs> Just put together in all the wrong ways, right. you know. It, it's it's got it's a guy with the best, most beautiful looking front <coughs> double and side chest, and back double, the most unique in the sport right now at two eighty one and six two, with a small waist. That's that's the whole thing it's right height, there. Yeah, the height. Well, that's what that sums it all it, up. It's the height. I agree. It's the height when he comes on stage. You know what? When he comes on stage at that prejudging, I knew before he hit a shot, the show's over completely because I knew when he hit the front double, things, he's got a body where things change when he hits the poses. A lot of people in, in bodybuilding right now, you know, when they hit a front double, you see the front double, but, you know, the lats don't get actually bigger and the waist more tapered and the, and the legs, you know, like open up and separate clearly. It, it's just a unique physique that's, 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 that is, uh, you know, it does not have the graniteness of Dexter Jackson. Uh, it does not have the muscle maturity and graniteness of uh, Phil Heath. But it has its own strong attributes, which he talked about in the speech. Yeah. You know, it has its own strengths. And those strengths can negate uh, the density and graininess of a lot of other competitors. Well, what he said was that, you know, all of us athletes up there here have diversity. They we're all different physiques. And the great thing about bodybuilding is that there's a fan out there who could relate to each one of us in a different way because maybe we, we look like them or, we want, or they want to emulate us. And that's what makes bodybuilding so great. I thought that was a, a really true statement that he made about the diversity of the sport and that it's good that we have all these different shapes and sizes and conditionings because if we didn't, we'd all look exactly the same. It would be boring. 
Right. Yep. Speaking of Flex Wheeler, um, Flex Wheeler made a big announcement this past week, guys, that um, he was making a comeback in the Classic Physique division. Uh, I talked to him after the show, Chris and I did, and he confirmed that, and he felt that, you know, with all the blood testing and health testing that he's getting, that even though he has a kidney transplant, where he is on anti-rejection drugs and he has a, a foreign kidney in his body, he feels that he can health, in, in some healthful way, compete again uh, on stage in classic physique. I think he would have to make 210 pounds, according to what Chad Nichols told me. Um, what do you think about that decision, John? You know, it's, it's it's along the lines of, you know, what I thought of Lavroni making a comeback. I mean, I think it's, I think it's within your purview to decide to do that. Um, and you certainly have the cred to, to say you're going to do that. But, you know, health, health issues, health concerning his health, I, I really don't think dehydrating yourself down to the point that he would, you know, have to to compete on stage is going to be you know, a, a, a great thing for his one transplanted kidney. So, um, I don't know. I, it, it, I'd, he, he obviously talked to God and figured it out, but, um, I don't know. It's, if it were me, I, I wouldn't do it, yeah. but Chris? can't stop somebody from doing what they want to do. What do you think, Chris? I don't like the idea. Yeah. Um, I don't like the idea because I consider Flex Wheeler one of the most, you know, he's the original Cedric, the original cartoon character, Body. Yep. Uh, and I rem I know what, you know, some of his fabulous looks look like. And, you know, no matter what he looks like in this division, it's going to be a letdown from the yep. insane specimen that used to get up there. And as we know, in the olden days of the IPB, in the 90s, the... The emphasis they put on the quarter turns was insane. Right. You'd have to be peeled from every angle. Yep. And Wheeler, at his best, on his quarter turns, you didn't really want have to see the front double front last word side, chest side, try. The quarter turns were insane. Yeah. And we're not going to see that. Be, it, you know, to me, it's like, you know, Donald Trump building uh, Trump Tower 2 and say, God, he only did 22 stories this time. <laughs> and he didn't make it out of glass. He, you know, the, it was wood framing. It's right. still a fabulous building, and, and, you know, it's got the Trump name on it. But, you know, as a purist, it's just, I admire Flex. I see Flex at these shows, and I always say to him the same thing. He probably thinks I'm an idiot. These guys are good Flex. But you were just, at your best, you were just, I said that to him before the announcement. I saw him at the, in the elevator on Thursday night, and I said, Flex, I remember when you were at Steve Weinberger's gym. The first year you won the Night of Champions, he wore black trunks at that show. He sat in the aerobics room, which doubled the supposed room. He must have sat for two hours to decide, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm so tired. <laughs> and he was peeled for that show. Right. And not only peeled, that's one thing. A lot of people get peeled these days. Everyone in, on Instagram is peeled. But he was peeled with separation that I've never seen in my life to this day. And fullness, round. Yeah, wait, I'm not done. And fullness that was just only Hanna-Barbera or, you know, Disney could draw stuff like that. He yeah. looked like a cartoon character. And he could put on a tight T-shirt after that. And you'd <laughs> say, like, it's even crazier in a T-shirt. You know, the small waist, the big delts, the, 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 the tricep, like a horseshoe, like, so, like there is a horseshoe in it. Yeah. So I like to remember Flex the way I, – I, I just don't like people, you know, they have – Flex has a legendary status in bodybuilding. In 30 years, they'll stay – you ever see those pictures on the internet of that guy, Flex Wheeler, like when he won the USA back in – these guys don't look as good as that now, and they're not going to get better for whatever reason. That time in that day, you know, that era, uh, you know, take out, take out Dorian, take out Ronnie – you know, Flex had the most unique package that I've ever seen on stage. And don't you think, Chris, more towards a classic physique even than it is best compared to, you know, like of like of a, a Dorian or a Coleman, we're going to say, I'm going to do classic physique. I mean, Flex was almost already classic physique, but just, yeah. you know, a little too big. But he, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, for my point being is if he's going to get 
he's pretty much going to have to go be- almost back to where he was I agree. You know, in, in 98. You know, so, you got to get the bellies. You got to have the bellies, and those bellies aren't going to show up if you're 210. They got to be right. round to. Oh, and I don't. You know, I, he's going to have the lines. Yeah. I don't think he can push his body to the point that it needs to in the gym. You know, via the supplements, obviously he can't do that because of his health. Uh, so I mean, I I think it's 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 not it's not a good decision. But you know, what? I think that we get to this point in our in our lives, and he's a little older than me. Uh, John, you're a little older than me. Chris, you're a little older than me, and I'm feeling it already. I'm starting to say to myself, I think I have permanent limitations on myself because we always think we can go back to what we were. And I'm saying to myself, you know, there's certain things I can't do physically now that I was able to do in my 20s and 30s, but I have to just admit to myself that I be I, if I do them now, I will hurt myself. I'm just not capable. Dexter's of it. the and I don't and look, it, it's very it's very depressing to admit to yourself that you have limitations placed on yourself because of your age. And I think a lot of us want to try to prove that, that hey, we are still that guy. And I, and, I, and I really think this is what Flex is all about. His career was cut short because of the kidney transplant. I don't think he ever had closure to his career. And, I, and, and maybe this is what he needs. Dave, I, I blame the Blade Dexter Jackson for all this, these comebacks, too, because <laughs> everyone sits in the... You know, and they, they say, I beat Dexter, I beat Dexter, I beat Dexter. And and also, you know, Sean Ray's going to have a mel- uh, a meltdown because he already was concerned for LeBron's health. Yeah. Right? Well, Dex- Dexter's never stopped. That's right. why right. Dexter is, is Dexter. So, you know, Dexter didn't take 13 years off and then come back. So, um, I, I don't know, man. D- Dave made a very, very, very valid point that all of us – wrestle with when we get up here at the half yard line 50 yard line is is um you know you, you gotta you gotta just concede you you cannot squat 600 pounds anymore with without consequences right you know <laughs> and I, I was loading the leg press up the other day you know and i was i had like eight plates on each side and my wife walks by and she goes what the fuck are you doing <laughs> she's right oh, well, she presses she goes you know, I go, what? I used to do way more than that. You know, <laughs> We're, it, you know take, take three off. You yeah. know, it's just like do 30 reps. But you you can't. You just, you, your body can't do it. You got to like, it's not like you got to quit, but you got to adapt. Yeah. So it's either that or be injured and, it, you know, complain incessantly of aches and pains and, you know, wor- worry if you're going to, you know, how much noise your body's going to make when you get out of bed in the morning. So, you know, you, you, you do have to compensate and, you know, to train like, look, fl- when Charles Glass trained Flex back in the 90s, you needed a paint scraper to get tr- tr- Flex out of the gym. I mean, he was literally melted on the floor, you know, and, and, and this was for like a, you know, a, a two hour arm workout. It, it took two hours because it was 15 minutes of working out and an hour of 45 minutes of tr- trying to get him up, you know, get up. So. I, I can, and, and that was when he was at his prime. I mean, how is he going to do that, you know, now at 50 with one kidney and, you know, well, although he is a freak, so who knows anything could happen. But I, I just, I, I agree with Chris. We're going to want to see pretty close to what Flex was. And, and, and we're not going to see that. Well, I, you know, I want to say, you know, because, you know, I'm sure he's going to watch at some point. I do wish him the best. Uh, you know, I don't want it to come across as negative. And, no, and no. Just, and, and because there's, I, I would love, you know what? Could you imagine if he won it, right? Or, I mean, could you imagine if he was in the running and he looked insane? You know, people people want to see, people are rooting to see, like, the LeBrons look like they looked. Or Wheeler come back and look, you know, at a lower body weight in the classic, you know, close to what he looked like. Um, because we love that look. We admire that look. And it's, you know, it... it it brings it's so nostalgic. I, I think. Look, if there's if there was any old you know retired pro, yeah, that could flex. Off, it, it would be him. I, I would say that. Here's my he question. Just, Here's my question to you guys. Do you think that Flex is having money issues, and he sees, hey, Lavroni made a big hit with this comeback. He made a lot of money. A lot of people were throwing gays do guest posings now. Can Flex have a monetary need to do this? I mean, or do you think it's it's completely driven by the fact that he feels he has no closure or he did not have closure on his career? 
I don't know. Flat, you know what? It, it's funny you say that, Dave, because uh, Cedric says, can't these guys, meaning retired bodybuilders, just go work for Time Warner? He says, when, when he's done, he's when he's done, he's going back working for the phone company, he always tells me. <laughs> uh, you know, it, who knows, Dave? I'll tell you this. I, I met with uh, Mike Francois, you know, he lives in Columbus, and he's never articulated it to me before. You know, we were talking about, like, the money in the sport, and he said, you know, I came up in an era where you could get contracts, and, you know, money was there every month, and and it was good money. Um, and then it switched to the love of competing. So I don't really, and I didn't press it because I was surprised by this statement. He, he said, I wish I had three more years. And I don't mean I wish I had three more years to make money for three more years, that type of money, whatever he was making, or he meant that he just loved it so much, but he's not saying, I want to make a comeback because he knows he can't. Well, he I, might I, be I, able to. John Meadows has no colon. Like John said, he's, he's halfway there. John Meadows has no John Meadows has no colon either, so maybe John Meadows can help uh, Mike Francois. Yeah. Well, and John is no spring chicken either. <laughs> no, but he I, never I, stopped. He never stopped. I, look, I don't think Flex has has got any financial issues. I mean, I mean, I would be surprised if he did. He just signed. He just got signed that deal with uh, Black Skull. Uh, what? Generation Iron and Black Skull well, Nutrition. Generation Iron, and you know, Flex wants him. But look, there, Flex should never be broke. There's just he right. should just never be broke. I mean, he's just too well known in this industry and too vital at, at this point in his career. Um, oh, Mike Tyson I, was broke. My, my only, my only, my only, not to say anything negative about what he's attempting to do. My only concern would be for his health because I yeah. love the guy. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't, I don't want to see anything happen to him. You know, for for you know trying to you know prove a point but look he's a bodybuilder and you know you can take the bodybuilder you know at, off the stage but you can't take the stage out of the bodybuilder yeah. they want to compete it's it's part of who they are what they do it's what you ask flex what he is he's a bodybuilder he's not an entrepreneur he's not a businessman although he does do those things he identifies with you know he's a bodybuilder and that's bodybuilders compete and hey. when you and when like dave said when you when you you know, have to retire before your your career is over, or, or to retire early when you ostensibly could have kept going, like like a Dexter. You know, um, it hurts, and you you know, and you can't just w turn your back on that and expect that you know you're never going to think about that again. And then you saw Kevin do it, and I, I don't think it has anything to do with the money. I think it has got to do with in his heart, he is a bodybuilder, he's a competitor, he's fiercely competitive, and well, he probably does see dollar signs and all this too, but that's not to say that uh, you know it, it, it's a it's a financial it, issue. Other than the fact that he just likes to make money. Right. Here, here's so, a good question. I mean, here's my question for you guys: If you know someone came down from above and said to you, "Hey, look, I can give you another life in bodybuilding," you know, uh, but I'm going to cut your life short ten years, and now you're fifty years old now. Okay, w would you do it? No. As, a, you mean, as a competitor? Yeah, I'm saying if you had, if someone said, I'm going to give you the physique that you always wanted, you know, the old devil's advocate question, I'm going to give you the, uh, the right. physique you, you wanted, but you're going to, you, you're going to be dead in, in 10 years before you normally would, would you do Fuck. it? No. No, I wouldn't. Hell no. Not at 50 years old, you wouldn't do it, <laughs> hey, right? Dave. Maybe when you were 20, <laughs> you might say that. <laughs> Maybe, but I doubt it. 10 years is a to long time. To Romano's point, once a bodybuilder, always a bodybuilder. Cedric Django was was suspicious of how quickly Arnold got in the perfect position of that three quarters back shot, Dave. He said, "You see the angles, man. He nailed every one of them." He said, "That means he's been hitting that shot for forty years still." That's right. That you know, and Arnold takes a shower. He's like, you know, in the bathroom. He said, shots. "You know him. And, you you know him and Frank and the guys get together once in a while, hit some shots." Of course. And I heard Ralph Moeller and, and Franco, when, when they go over Arnold's house and they're smoking cigars, Arnold's like, Ralph, take your shirt off. Hit, hit the double by. <laughs> and then Frank, he makes Franco hit most muscular shots. I've heard that before. I would, totally wouldn't doubt it. I mean, they're bodybuilders. Jesse I mean, they Ventura. They did other things, but they're bodybuilders. So <laughs> God bless them. You know, that's, that's what it, I like. Hey, Dave, was it, wasn't there, uh, wasn't there a... Uh, uh, with Michael Jackson, a Black Wizard of Oz. Yeah, the Wiz. Yeah, the Wiz. Yeah, I think we got to. 
Arx Muscle's got to produce Commando with Cedric. No, we should produce the Wiz, and Cedric oh, could be the Scarecrow. No, you, can, you, can, you can call it ur the Urban Commando. <laughs> Oh, that is so and instead of carrying a sword, he could carry like a Colt 35 and a... <laughs> you know, Commando, that Commando movie was my favorite because there's a scene in the beginning where he's walking out of the woods. You don't know it's Arnold yet, but you see this huge log, like it's a whole tree on the guy's shoulder. And he's got his own, and you just see the arm and the shoulder and the pecs, and he's walking out of the woods, completely no shirt on. That That's, that's right. my... That was my, my goal at some point, to hold a log like that on my shoulder and have it be that big. So, I could relate to that. Let, let's talk about some of the controversy of the weekend, John, because you weren't there. I wish you were, because it probably would have been more controversial than it was. Uh, we were minding our own business, doing what we do best, original TV programming. You know, We probably added about 4,000 new members to our YouTube subscriber base in the two weeks leading up to the Arnold. Matter of fact, I hate to say it, but we were really the only people that did any preview coverage of the Arnold Classic before the Arnold Classic. Uh, no one else did anything. I mean, we had interview after interview every single day of the week. We had Iron Debate, we had Iron Rage. I mean, we, we didn't stop. I did my rants because it was so important to promote this huge event, the Arnold Classic, you know. When we got there, um, after the Friday night festivities were over and Ahmad Ashkenani had won, we're going to talk about him in a little bit, he won the 212 division. Very, very difficult battle uh, between him and uh, Jose Raymond up there and David Henry. And he comes backstage and he comes over to us because he wants to be interviewed. Because we've interviewed him. As a matter of fact, I talked to him three days earlier on, on a Road to the Arnold interview we did with him from Kuwait Gym there, from Oxygen Gym in Kuwait. And he comes over to me, and Johnny's setting up the camera, and before I'm, just as I'm about to interview him, Sean Ray runs about 20 feet from where he was set up with MD, over to, to Ahmad Ashkenani, he bear hugs him, turns him around without saying anything to us, and marches him over to the MD area, where he then proceeds to start interviewing him. Now I look at Johnny, and I look at Chris, and I say, what the fuck just happened? And, you know, uh, Johnny, play it. Because I told, I told Johnny, get that camera on me. I'm going over there to confront Sean. This is bull crap. I'm not letting this, this you know what, get away with it. All right, here's the, we're going to play the footage. All right. Hold on, wait a second. We were supposed to interview Ahmad Ashkenani. What happened? All right, they let... And what just happened? <laughs> Submit it for your approval. The history of RX muscle and muscular development is one that comes in chapters. One chapter includes days of the past when John Romano and Dave Palumbo used to work for muscular development. That transition into an era called the Y Cut Back era. There have been all sorts of episodes and chapters in between, one including an ex employee by the name of David Bay coming to RX muscle to air out his dirty laundry. What's my place in this? I don't know. What's Johnny Styles' place in this? I have no idea. See, at least Johnny Styles lifts. There are people in the YouTube comments that say that I can't even spell the word gym. I probably can. It's a complicated word. I'm a 185 pound brown guy who barely ever goes to the gym and here I am talking about bodybuilding. But enough of that and enough about me. Tonight, after the 212 Arnold Classic, won by Ahmed Ashkenani of the Camel Crew, which, oh, by the way, started on RX Muscle before anybody else wants to take credit for it. But I will give credit to Dennis James. Dennis James started that, but it was on RX Muscle. It was on our Iron Debate. So, Amla Shinani wins. Camel Crew's happy. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. I'm stoked for the guy. The guy's awesome. We are set to interview Amla Shinani. And then this happens. Anybody Sean, interview. they actually you, about to get you actually did, did you actually take him away from my interview as I was about to interview him? <laughs> as you guys can recognize. Well, well you translate. You can you speak can, as you can recognize. You can speak we got yeah. Listen. <laughs> get out of here. That must be why he get went out to, of here. because you have that that, you got oh, that bilingualish. <laughs> Now, 
comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! A <laughs> uh, thing going on. Take that thing but out of here. Then Watch again, out. where's George? He's talk to maybe you. He's not going to talk maybe to you. George, maybe, George, maybe George can translate. Can start over. <laughs> he speaks Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Paul, not you. Oh, I should now. Yeah, I was about to interview him th three, three, 30 seconds ago, Peter. Don't get thrown out. 30 seconds ago. I'm not getting thrown out of anyway. I didn't do anything wrong. We got it on I'm film. about to. We got it on film when what we you, show it what to you, Arnold. When we show it to Arnold people. Show, the, show it to him. I was about to interview someone and you pulled him away. Why is he going to talk to me? Talk to me. On, he he, he, he talked. <laughs> What happened? Three days ago, I interviewed Ahmed Ashkenadi, but he's not going to talk to us now, three days later. Maybe Blackman's giving him a, a, a one-day contract that, that he'll never pay, right? Or hey, maybe hey, Vader's paying it. 30 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes contract. All right. Well, you know, that pretty much is what happened. Uh, the, the irony, there are a couple of things I wanted to bring up about, about what went on over there. First of all, Sean Aff obviously was playing dumb, like he didn't, that he didn't want to admit to anyone that he just came and stole the guy to me. Secondly, Peter McGuff was telling us to piss off and tapping the mic my microphone. Now, what I found out later, I'm not going to tell you who told me, was that Peter McGuff was drunk. Imagine that. Peter McGuff drunk at a show? It happens all the time, right? So Peter McGuff, in his drunken state, comes over to me and, and he's like, Piss off! Piss off! Piss off! And it's about the athletes, which was a which was a brilliant statement on his part, because now one of our new hashtags on Rx Muscle is it's about the athletes. And after all, when you interview people, isn't that what's all about the athletes? John, what's your take? I know Chris was there. I want John's take on this whole Peter McGuff drunken fool act that he pulled on us. I must have watched that part of the tape about 35 <laughs> times because to me, Cedric. I love you. You're a great champion, but that segment of tape eclipsed everything. The entire weekend, to me, the, the hinged on a drunk Peter McGuff coming up to you and tapping the microphone and saying, "Piss off, piss off." You know, that, to me. Now, bear in mind, Peter McGuff used to hate Steve Blackman. Okay, and and Steve Blackman equally hated McGuff. Doubly, not equally, doubly, because Weeder put McGuff and Blackman in the same category when Blackman believed it was me and McGuff were in the, at the same level and that Blackman was on Weeder's level. And Blackman couldn't stand the fact that it was McGuff constantly taking shots, you know, at Blackman and then Blackman sitting me on on McGuff because Blackman wanted to be Weeder. So it, it, now, you know, McGuff is Blackman's lackey. So it's probably unpaid lackey, too. Well, uh, I, if, I told him that. I said, I, I said you're pretty much, uh, oh, look who we got. Uh, uh, special call and guest live on RxMuscle.com, the champ himself, Cedric McMillan. What's up, my friend? Hey, what's up? Hey, can y'all hear me? We can. Okay. All right, cool. See, you win the Arnold Classic. Now I, I can't get rid of you. Now I, I now you want to interview all the time with us. Hey, I absolutely don't want no damn interview with you, <laughs> Dave. Okay. <laughs> look at I, the, you know, you know what, you know who he looked like. It was a, it was a, it was a movie. Remember that old movie Chuck Norris was in a long time ago, and he had to fight this psycho man that wouldn't die that had on that one piece zip up jumpsuit. You know, you know the man I'm talking about. I know, I know what you're That's talking what about. That's who he looks like. Thank you. <laughs> he, looks, he, he look like a Michael Myers mask. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> Cedric. It, it's very kind of you. Talk to us a little bit about this victory. Now that it, you've kind of digested it a little bit, and you, uh, I'm sure you went and saw the scorecards. You won unanimously uh, on all three scorecards. Perfect fives. Um, d does that instill more confidence in you now as, as a legitimate threat to the Olympia throne? Uh, well, I didn't look at no scorecards. You know, I don't uh, get into get into all that stuff. I try. I don't even worry about it. You know, um, all the way down until you know they call my name, everything is still up in the air for me as far as who's going to win or who's not. You know, I'm always prepared for worst case scenario. Um, you know, I, I was just talking to a guy 
um, just in town. That's one of the reasons why I'm late. And he was like, how does it feel? And I was like, I, I feel the same. You know, I don't I don't get too up and excited about nothing. And because that that same quality helps me to not get too down when things don't go quite right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've never been one of these type of guys that when, you know, I win a show, I'm jumping up and down and all of that stuff. I, I've never been that type, you know, because life don't begin and end, you know, with a first place finish, you know. So uh, and, and also I feel, sometimes I feel, you know, being, you know, over celebratory uh, can be a little bit disrespectful to the people that didn't win. You know, it's kind of like rubbing it in their faces, you know, but I, I know uh, bodybuilders, <laughs> Most bodybuilders put so much of their life into the sport that, you know, when they do win, it's a bit overwhelming. Uh, but uh, but honestly, man, working with somebody like Chris, <laughs> you know, th there'll be times where uh, I win and, uh, we, and we would still be troubleshooting as if I lost. <laughs> and, and, there, and, 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 and there will be times when I lose and we will be – you know, looking at the situation from, you know, at, at, at the progress that I made and, you know, and all the bullshit that comes along, you know, with competing in general. So, 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 you know, if, if a simple question is, how do you feel now that you won? I don't feel any different. You know okay. what I'm saying? I still feel like, you know, I got to try to go make some progress um, with the areas that need work and, um, and, and get back in the gym and do what I got to do, you know? All right. My, my question for you that I didn't get to ask you because you had the hiccups uh, after the show was over was, um, you know, hey, you, why you, you got to bring up my hiccups like that, man? You could have just said uh, the next question I want to ask you. Why you got to bring up my hiccups? <laughs> well, I didn't. Well, I wanted to explain to people why I let you go so quickly after your uh, your your victory uh, uh, speech, and I mean after your victory interview. Hey, I think I'm losing you guys. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Okay. Very good. C Cedric, you hear me? Is everything okay? Yeah, you can hear us. Give me a thumbs up if you hear us. I think we lost Cedric. All right, let's uh, let's cut back to Chris. Uh, I, what I wanted to ask Cedric was I wanted to ask him what he's going to do with the hundred. Oh, there he is. All right, you back, Cedric? It was it? Hey, was it me? Because I got full bars. I mean, it's probably us. It's probably us. Let here's the question okay. for you before you cut out again. You do very well for yourself financially now. You I know you have probably a little pension with the army. You work for SciTech Nutrition. Um, you know they support you from day one. I mean they've really been great to you. But let's face it, you won one hundred and thirty thousand dollars this past Saturday night. What would what does Cedric McMillan? What will Cedric McMillan do with that one hundred and thirty thousand after he pays taxes? Hey Chris, of course. hey Chris, he's saying that too loud, man. My cousin's gonna come asking <laughs> asking for twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and stuff, and. You know, I you know I hate to bother you, but I'm in a little, little trouble. You know what I'm saying? I need to get a little something paid. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so, the truth uh, so, so the honest truth, though. Yeah, what's the honest truth? Um, I bought I bought some extra land that's beside me, and uh, so I got like a 15 acre spot now. Oh wow! And uh, cool, Chris, Chris. I think I told you this. I was half asleep or something. I'm gonna. <laughs> It's funny. The funny. Sh I'm gonna get a pond dug <laughs> with some fish, with some fish put in it, you know, and 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 an oak tree planted beside it, you know, and, and that that's what I'm planning on doing with the money. I don't know how much of it it's gonna take, but I'll be ready. <laughs> Are you gonna dig the pond yourself, Cedric, or will you hire someone a now? Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm gonna get some professional pond diggers to oh, come wow. and do that. Why don't you yeah. put a pool in your backyard instead? <laughs> Hey, yeah, eh, you know, I'm a country boy, man. You know? <laughs> Does it feel nice to be able to say to yourself, hey, you know what? I'm actually making a pretty damn good living now from what I love to do. Uh, no, because because bodybuilding is so superficial and it's so uncertain. Uh, this money that you make is not sure money. You know what I'm saying? Now, you can... You can you can bet on your contract. Oh, I got a two year contract or a one year contract or whatever. You can you can bet on that for that certain amount of time, but it's not show money that you can depend on no matter what. You know, um, at any time the bottom can fall out. You could get an injury. Some people could just be displeased with you and they let you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's not that's not kind of like you know being in the army or having a a set job. You know where you can pretty much depend on you're gonna have a place to go every day. Uh, so, so I never even allow myself 
to feel comfortable with uh bodybuilding income, you know, because it, it could be it could be here to gate here today, gone tomorrow. John, do you have any questions for Cedric? How how how, how did you enjoy your seventy two hour contract with uh, muscular development? He didn't have one. Did I have a? Did I have one? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what, man? I tell you what. Listen, you know you usually usually uh the the people from MD they do me just like Dave do me. They send somebody and say, "Said we want to do an interview," and I can say no. You know what I'm saying? And it's all good. Uh, but this particular time, um, Blackman came up to me himself, you know, and it was it's real hard, you know, because he's an older fella, you know, you got to respect your elders and stuff, man. So I didn't feel good telling him no, you know, I said, shit, I just said, yeah. And, and so I ended up <laughs> having to do it. So it's all, it's all good, man. You know, I didn't want to be mean to him, you know, just like, just like how Chris, how Chris come, you know, Dave will say, go do an interview with Cedric, you know, and, and they kind of sucker me into it like that, you know? <laughs> what yeah. a lot of people yeah. Cedric have been asking about this you know you, your your stage antics were great with Arnold it was almost like you guys rehearsed a comedy act at the very very yeah. end I know you were super excited you did like a, a hump on you did like a, some kind of air hump on, on Arnold people seem to be appalled by that what, what was the meaning behind that <laughs> uh, all right well <laughs> like we, like I, like I talked about in the little, um, the, I think they call it a champion seminar the next morning. Yeah. Oh man, listen, I hate Snapchat, right? <laughs> and uh, he already Snapchatted doing my routine. You yeah. know, I, was, I don't know what you're doing, man. You know, so I pick at him a little bit, um, and and everything was was fine, you know. And then at the end, I thought we were done, so I picked up that heavy ass trophy and I'm ready to go. And he was ready to go. Then it was like, oh, another Snapchat. So I was like, damn it, you know. And so, ah. so uh, when when he want to Snapchat, I gotta stand behind him. And you know, I'm I'll be honest. Pretty much any uh, grown ass man that want to Snapchat with their face and my face <laughs> on the same screen, and I gotta get behind them, I'm probably gonna hump them. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's, 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 that's just. Hey, like it, it come with the territory. You want to Snapchat with me? I'm probably gonna hump you. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Rem so I, I humped him. <laughs> but you know what? He was laughing about. It. We were laughing about it the next morning, and uh, he was laughing about it in the moment. He's a grown ass man, so I'm pretty sure if he was offended or something, you know, he would have said, "Hey, man, what the hell are you doing?" You know, or something like that. Or if he didn't notice it, his people would have said, "Hey, look at what Cedric did. Look at how." And it would have been. And a whole, you know, a probably on the low discussion about it. But he's a jokester, and I, I honestly believe uh, he had more fun, uh, you know, a Saturday night with me than he's ever had at any one of his shows. I'm sure. Uh, but but for those people that are offended, you know, it, it's you know that's kind of how it is. Like one of my bosses from work uh, in the army, he sent me a text. And I said, did you see me humping Arnold? He said, yes, I did. And, uh, and then he died laughing about it. And I said, well, you know, I said, well, some people are saying whole countries are um, appalled at me and uh, outraged. And he said, yeah, they just don't know. They just don't know the real you, you know. Uh, and, 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 and most of the people, everybody that I know thought it was funny, thought it was great. Arnold thought it was great, too. We were all laughing. I mean, I mean, honestly, listen, like. <sighs> If you say it to yourself slow, it's impossible for you to take it serious. Like, you know what? I am angry that Cedric humped Arnold's butt <laughs> on stage. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you say it slow to yourself, it's impossible to be upset about it, right? Because you know, it's something silly. <laughs> Has Arnold given you a nickname? Yeah. Cedric? Uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, no, I don't think he gave me a nickname yet. Or, or yeah. has he has he morphed your name into a woman's name yet? No, absolutely. Oh, well, you got not. that coming. Yeah. So. <laughs> you think so? For that. No, nah, no, nah, I, I don't know, man. Maybe he uh, uh maybe he he might only do that to people he don't respect too well or something. Man. I well, don't know. I, well, Cedric, he's, now, when, he, when you're in his like when he used to train at World Gym and when I used to see him. And then they called the, all each other, you know, girls' names. They were really, like, you know, homophobic. So I, I, I'm sure that hump scene would fit right in with his, you know, comic psyche. That was – he probably really respected that. You know what? I'm sure he would have got me Sunday morning if he had it on his mind. He probably would have got me Sunday morning, you know, when we were yep. in, the, in the seminar. Yeah. Uh, but listen, I, I, I can't say um, – you know, I, I'm sitting sitting in the living room and looking at that trophy – 
and I can remember how it felt like, uh, and even saying to Chris, you know, it, there's times, you know, getting ready for shows where I have dreams about the show, you know, and I can remember like, man, I just wish I could win that trophy. I, I just wish I could win that trophy. You know, and, and um, people ask me today, what is your next goal? You know, and, and these kind of questions, like, I don't even know how to answer them, man, because I don't have a goal of winning a particular show or making a particular amount of money or getting a particular place. You know, my goal is always just to try to be better and do good. You know, um, I, I want to try to make, uh, make the sport a little more fun for everybody. Not necessarily to be clowns, but just to improve the camaraderie, you know, and let everybody know that you don't have to be an asshole, you know, to be a good pro. You know, there's been times where people said, um, you know, Cedric is too much of a nice guy. He doesn't have a killer instinct. Uh, he doesn't have a champion's mindset in order to be a champion or all this stuff, you know. And I think different people have different um, uh, mental and emotional attributes that they feel uh, contribute to their success, you know, and, and what motivates them. Uh, but guess what? Uh, there are some people out there that are probably just like me with the same type personality as me. And uh, if I can be able to present myself in a true way, you know, then they'd be able to relate to that and feel like, well, hey, if he can do it, then I can too, you know. So uh, that would be a goal for me, keeping it real. And you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so much. All right, look, let's be honest. If somebody was to ask you how fake is bodybuilding, everybody would say probably more than 90% of bodybuilding is fake, whether it's the fake-ass personalities, you know what I'm saying, different things like that, right? It's fake as hell. Uh, and, and I always want to try to be true and keep it real. So, uh, yeah, yeah so, so that's it. Let me, let me, I got one more question before we let you go. Um, okay. Obviously, now that you've kind of put the Arnold behind you and you've won that show, a lot of guys you know, will focus now their efforts on, on Olympia victory. Will Cedric mm -hmm. McMillan come back to the Arnold and compete again there, especially given your your new uh, camaraderie with Arnold Schwarzenegger himself? I, I will I will do the Arnold Classic every year uh, until I retire, as long as I'm physically able to. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, what I, you know, when I turned pro, uh, Arnold was such an you know an an idealistic figure to me and, and him having his own show i just you know it never hit oh uh, i'm a pro now i want to win the olympia the first thing that hit me is i want to win the arnold classic you know i want i want to i want to win the arnold classic and uh and i already told flex will i say you know to me he was the greatest arnold classic champion um and i told him i said i was going to try to break that record and dedicate those wins to him you know in his name because uh, I, I would like to see him, you know, be considered, you know, I know I know we got the most winningest, winningest Arnold Classic champion, but I think Flex Willer is the greatest. Actually, uh, so, 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 so doing, you know, not listen, to correct you, Cedric, going but, to a but, show and winning a show for me um, doesn't really do a whole lot for me. But for me to go and win the Olympia for Chris so he can have an Olympia champion. That is what's special to me. That is what means something to me. You know, to go to a show and, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to beat one of George Farrell's guys for Chris. That You know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is, is what I like sir. to do, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, that that's, that's the kind of stuff I like to do, man. Not for myself, but, you know, for the people that I care about, you know? Right. Yeah. Cedric, just to correct you, uh, Dexter Jackson happens to be the most winningest Arnold Classic champion with five wins. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. And so I got to get four more right. and then another one to break that. Right. Yes. Right. But Flex Will is the greatest. All right. Well, Cedric, thank you for calling in. And, uh, you know, you, you put on a great show for not only all the fans, right. but us in the press. And I, I couldn't be happier for the victory that you took home this weekend. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, if you hear anything about any countries coming after me for humping, Arnold's but let me know, you know, give me a warning in advance. Hey, one more question. So I can make sure we all got our shotguns ready down here. Yeah, in the country. yeah. One more question. <laughs> you consider yourself country, right? You consider yeah. yourself country. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, you consider yourself country. Now oh, yeah. your your competitor who finished second behind you, Dallas McCarver, his nickname is Big Country. Uh yeah, how do you feel yeah. about that? 
And that's a pretty fitting ass name because he's big as hell in any country too. So <laughs> is he country yeah, like you I, are? I wouldn't disagree with that. Is he is he yeah, real country? I think he might even look here. I think he might even be a little you know what? He might be damn near redneckish. You know what I'm saying? Like he's <laughs> right there. Pretty damn close to it, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I like like I like I don't even know if I would go visit him at his mom and daddy's house. You know what I'm saying? Like I fucking <laughs> You know that movie? You know that movie Get Out? What's the name of that movie with that, with that black dude? With the, shit, man, they might harvest my organs or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I, just, I might not make it out of there, man. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's, I ain't willing to take that chance. <laughs> That's a country C- motherfucker. <laughs> Cedric, you're the greatest. Thank you for calling in, man. It was a pleasure right, talking to you. Thank y'all, man. All right. All right. Thank y'all. All right, guys, we're going to we're gonna take a commercial break because, uh, you know, we did a lot of footage. We got to give our commercial, uh, our advertisers a chance to be heard. When we come back, we're going to consider continue talking about this MD controversy that happened this past weekend because we kind of got cut short by the Cedric uh, spontaneous call-in. So, guys, stay tuned, and we'll be back in two minutes. A legendary name in hardcore supplementation. Iron Mag Labs. 100% original, patent-pending Andro Compound. The most effective, hardcore, groundbreaking, bodybuilding supplements in the world. In the world. Iron Mag Labs. Revolutionizing hardcore supplementation for more than a decade. Visit IronMagLabs.com. IronMagLabs.com. Hi, I'm Dave Palumbo, and I just had a protein shake made with Quest Nutrition's new salted caramel protein powder. And I can tell you this, it's on a whole new level. It's a total reinvention of the protein shake. The taste is incredible, and its creamy texture and richness make it taste like a real caramel milkshake. It's incredibly low carb, less than one gram of sugar, and 22 grams of protein in every serving. No soy, and it's gluten-free. Just add water, ice, a scoop of protein, and shake it up. It's that easy. I actually look forward to drinking this shake. And Quest Nutrition has got a total of seven different flavors. They come in convenient single-serving packets so you can mix and match. Check out loveyourproteinpowder.com for more information on Quest Protein Powders and some delicious shake inspirations. Welcome back to Heavy Muscle Radio on TV this weekend. I'm Dave Palumbo talking with Chris the Technician Aceto and John Romano. And guys, we were just, uh, before Cedric rudely interrupted us for a great interview, uh, we were speaking about the MD controversy that went on this past week with Sean Ray stealing Amin Ashkenani away from me as I was about to interview him without even asking me permission or saying to me, hey guys, you know, can, can I interview him first or... Or even lie, trying to lie to me where, where, and say he was exclusive to MD, which we knew he wasn't. Um, so that whole thing went down. I went over there. I confronted Sean. Peter McGuffin, a drunken stupor, came over and, and, and gave us our new hashtag. It's about the athletes. It's all about the athletes. And my question for you is, because all this went down, I believe, out of Blackman's frustration at the fact that muscular development is is self-destructing, and, I, and I'll give you, I'll give you some, um, I'll give you some some background. Uh, muscular development had hired a videographer to shoot this weekend for them. The videographer was owed a ton of money by Blackman, so he told Blackman, "I'm not shooting unless you bring my money." Blackman brought him a check. The videographer went to the bank, cashed the check. Okay, went back and told Blackman, "Thank you for paying me." And then Blackman's like, "Okay, are you gonna work for us this weekend?" He said. Basically, F off, and he took off. So Blackman was left with no videographer. Uh, so he had a commandeer, Kit, who was the, uh, the editor of MD Latino, uh, to work for him, which, of course, he would never do unless he was in dire straits. And now Kit is like a, uh, is like a, is a cheerleader for Blackman. And as you can see him in the video as well, uh, you know, crying or whatever he was spouting out at me. The, uh, the question I have, John, for you is, Jordan Blackman was there too. Isn't Jordan the videographer supposedly? Well, well, well you, you would think since fifteen hundred dollars off the top of every advertising contract goes goes to Jordan Blackman. So, um, 
one one would think that that would be an exchange for some sort of service, uh, you know, other than just because you share the same last name as the guy who, you know, owes everybody else money. So um, that in of itself is is really ridiculous well, when, you, when you think of it. Yeah. But yeah, if he's supposed to be the videographer, uh, he should be the videographer. Kit is not a videographer. No. You know, Kit is, is well, I used to employ him, so I have, you know, a little firsthand knowledge about Kit. Um, I, I, I think putting a video camera in his hand is, is probably like handing Edward Scissorhands a raw chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the funny thing with, that MD was doing all weekend was they were trying to imply, including Ron Harris in a forum post on the R, uh, MD forums, was trying to imply that, that they were getting tons more views on their videos all weekend long than we were, <clears throat> and which obviously was just not wasn't the case. Um, if you, Jordan Blackman, a matter of fact, even said to, to, to Johnny, um, we're getting much more hits on our videos. And Johnny's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, Johnny's got some of the statistics from the weekend he can put up there. It, it, I mean, it's not even close. A matter of fact, if you look at their wrap-up, their wrap-up got like 1,400 hits and ours has 14,000 hits. Uh, do you want to know the irony of the whole thing? The video that got the most hits on their website this weekend... Now, when I say the most hits, I mean 10 times the hits of anything else. Guess what? Was the video of me. The video they shot of me as I was interrupting Sean in his video, that was the video that got the most hits on their site by thousands and thousands and thousands more than anything else, which basically says their coverage sucks, no one cares about it, but controversy will check out. So right. I think I should submit an invoice to Blackman because I was the most valuable person on their staff the entire weekend. You'll just join the masses of other people who have submitted <laughs> invoices and aren't getting paid. So I, I, I would save the time. Yeah. But you know, I, I have to say that this to comment on this Ashkenazi thing, a la Sean Ray, you know, I think that's probably the lowest class thing that you could possibly do, you know, is is commandeer someone from an interview like you're, like you were arresting him, right? And you know, bring him over, bring him over to you. I mean, and and then Peter McGuff drunkenly saying, "Yeah, it's about the athletes. It's all about the athletes." Really, it's about the athletes. Well, you're working for a guy who routinely screws athletes, you know, over uh, constantly. So if it's all about the athletes, then Peter, you're working for the wrong guy, because you're, you're working with a guy who is. It's all about him, not about the athletes. So you're completely cocked in that regard with with, with that statement. If but. Thank you for the hashtag because it's always it's always nice to get a you know a free a freebie from Blackman. These are the same but, guys uh, that will be bad mouthing Blackman when he fires them because he can't pay them anymore, and then he'll be like, "He owes me a hundred thousand dollars." Piss off, Blackman! Piss off. That's that's a very good point, Dave. Because there's no one can tell me that that bad blood between with between uh, uh, McGuff and, and Blackman has subsided. The only thing that's quelling it or was was the dollar sign. Now it's right. you know whiskey. So <laughs> it, at, at some point he's either going to run out of excuses or run out of booze, and and he's, it, it's not going to be okay with him anymore, and he's going to leave. And when he does, the, the past is going to catch up to the future, and McGuff is going to hate Blackman again, and we're and we're and we're going to hear all, all, all about it, and it's going to be this giant this giant pizza pie of hypocrisy, you know, going <laughs> up that you know, oh, I play now he owes me one hundred fifty thousand dollars, a little schmuck, and you know, piss off and. That's what that's going to be, you know, McGuff next year when he's drunk at the Arnold. He's going to be he's going to be bad mouthing Blackman because Blackman's not going to last till next year. Yeah. So I think you're going to see, you know, this is what it reminds me of. OK, you get a guy off this just a regular guy off the street, you know, and 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 you tell him you tell him you got 48 hours to live. Now, here's a shot of heroin, and here's five hits of speed. Go ahead. Go do your thing. <laughs> and 
you, you, you run around and you do the most desperate, ludicrous things because you know the end is right there. You see it. The end is coming. And you got five million things you want to try to do to extend your life or put it off or, <laughs> you know, try to somehow move that date away. And, and you're, you're frantic and you're lying, cheating, stealing, bullshitting, you know, doing whatever you can to keep the gravy train coming to pay in your, your useless kids. And then, you know, also keep the doors open long enough to, 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 to bring more money in, to attract more money. Blackman went around to every one of those booths at the expo trying to sell advertising to a failing website. What is he promising them? That, that they're number one at Blockbuster? You know, what's, what's the metrics by which Blackman is using to support his ad dollars for his banners and his, you know, digital side because his magazine is a pamphlet? So what, what's, what's he offering? He's so, sitting at Rich Piana's booth like a little freaking puppy <laughs> waiting for, for a, a milk bone, you know? It's and to, true. Yeah, and I could just picture that conversation. You're telling oh, the truth. Trying to relate to Piana. Okay, here's a guy, big dude, big muscles, tattoos, weird hair, earrings, and here's Blackman. Yeah, bro. We're, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna, we're gonna put you on the cover. We're going to put you on the cover of MD, you know? I bet he does. I'll but, bet and, he does and, it. And, and I can just imagine Piana listening to this going... The fuck are you talking about? It you know. So, um, I, I I really want to know what Blackman is offering this last desperate ditch effort to get advertisers into to prop up his ailing company. So you know, uh, you know, his son can make fifteen hundred dollars off the top of each of each ad sale. Well, I, I know for, for a fact when I went to the uh, Quest booth to do some interviews because obviously Quest Nutrition was the title sponsor of all our coverage this past weekend. Who was there but Blackman talking to Ron, the owner? So I said to uh, Bruce, who's our good friend over there, what is, Blackman, what is Blackman trying to steal our advertising? And he's like, yep, <laughs> he does it all the time. Does So Blackman is so desperate. He's like, he's going booth the booth himself now selling advertising because I'm sure all his ad people probably quit because they weren't getting paid. And that is a true story, Johnny. You, uh, John, you did tell that he was at the Rich Piano booth. I have a client who saw him there, like sitting like on the side like a puppy dog, waiting for, uh, for Rich to talk to him. Ah, Rich, I, I, I can make you a star. Uh, Steve, I already am a star. I, I don't I need you to make me a star. <laughs> Isn't it great in today's day and age of social media that, that, that the industry doesn't need Steve to make them a star anymore? That they, you could actually make yourself a star? I love it. Entrepreneurship is, at his best, right, Chris? one of the things that irks him probably almost as much as the fact that firing us was the stupidest thing he ever did because he'd be a media empire now had he not. Right. But, you know, you know, I don't know. This, the, the fact that, that he can just shamelessly go to people knowing he owes probably over a million bucks to various people and that he can shamelessly go to people and ask them for money to support his website, that's sinking, you know, that he has to lie about to say he's get more hits than us. I mean, you can prove that. Right. You mean, you, how, how, why would you say that when all you got to do is free, the most easiest metrics in the world on Google will show you that's not the case. It's right. not true. Look at your YouTube channel right. and look at yours. It's not even comparable, <laughs> not even in the same category. Right. Okay. So. I, I, the, the the fact that I the fact that he's walking around the Arnold Expo booth to booth soliciting money for advertising while he owes people money while he knows a certain amount is going to get peeled off the top and fed to his kids and his family that 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 it's just an absolute farce that any uh, uh, you know reach is going to be enjoyed by any of these advertisers or or or, or any you know conversion online is going to happen is, is an absolute story that's just never going to come true so uh, you know what is he promising these people is what i want to know what, what what what's what's the equivalent of you know we're number one in barnes and noble well, look it, it's what, worse than what, that john that? it's worse than that chris i mean we were talking about this isn't it crazy the audacity he has to even show his face at the Arnold Classic, knowing that he owes all these people money? I had 10 people come up to me and say, you know, I can't believe Blackman's here. The guy owes me money. I'm like, well, go confront him then. I said, it's all, I blame you guys because you guys are not doing anything to get your money from him. 
Chris, what called, what kind of audacity does he have? It, it's not audacity. It's called no shame. None. You you can you have to really think about what that means. No shame. To be able to understand that uh, he can be a, a, a sh that he can show up front and center uh, like nothing's happened, and I, and I say that, and it, it might sound incredibly mean, but that was on my mind. I saw him at the check-in, no shame, and I'm not going to throw people under the bus, but within and say who they were because they spoke to me in confidentiality, but they were athletes who were old money. And they came up to me and said, I can't believe he's here. And I, you know, I fully expect him to be there just as he was front and center, like nothing's ever happened, pretending, you know, that he doesn't owe, owe people money. You know what, Dave, I'll say this, you know, these, these, there's 200,000 people there over the weekend. And, you know, just you, you, you run into people, you're running around and say, Hey, Chris, like, you know, Hey, you know, how's Dave doing? Or how's Cedric doing? How's this, you know, Jose doing? And, uh, you know, I do a diet with this guy or, you know, I train with this person. I had uh, people come up to me over the weekend and say, oh, I've done stuff for Dave. I've done stuff for Dave. I used to work for RX Muscle. You know what I ask them right off the bat? Were you paid? And people say yes. And, and then they, they, I think they wonder. But, you know, I have an internal chuckle. Of course you were paid. <laughs> you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, there's people there, you know, and they, they want to pretend that, that everything's fine. And, and there's, there's no shame, but there's, on the other end of the spectrum, there is, as John says, the audacity. It, it takes audacity, too. It takes them both, no shame and audacity, to show up. And, you know, we, we didn't have Cedric on long here, but Cedric did do an interview with MD at the Meet the, uh, you know, Meet the Athletes, but he didn't do one after the show, you know? And yeah. Steve himself went up there to plead his case to do it. And there's bad blood there. He wasn't paid. Cedric McMillan was not paid. Don't forget, Cedric was cut from his contract twice yeah. over some flimsy little flopsy excuse, you know, that allowed Steve Blackman to weasel out of it. And when Cedric asked me, I said, you know what, Cedric? I still use one of these, bro. I can help you in two seconds. It's called the Rolodex. <laughs> I can get you a lawyer. To get you all your money right. and extend your contract right to the end, but that you know what? This is a testament to Cedric. Cedric, so you know what, man? I don't want to be with anyone who don't want to support me. You know, and so Cedric just let the contract fly, just let the money go out the window. You know, when he could have legally fought for it. So Jay Cutler uh, would have sued for certain. Yeah, of course he would. You you got you got to say that slow now to hear how ridiculous that sounds. <laughs> You're right, John. <laughs> um, I ran into a good friend of all of ours at the um, at the Hilton Hotel lobby uh, on I think it was Friday night, and uh, the former owner of Gold Gym, Ed Connors, was there. And you know Ed, he's meeting with. He's meeting with twenty-year-old guys to get him WWE contracts, and he's and he's you know he's he's just jet setting around. You know he he has to be in the middle of the action. He still looks exactly the same. He still looks great, and he actually told me he would come on the TV show for for an in-depth interview. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting him on. He knows more gossip about the industry than I think anyone else knows. He knows behind the scenes what went on back in the '90s. I mean, because he was a major major mover then. He, he straightened out that whole Jimmy Pelleccia destroying his oh, he condo did? in Palm Springs story, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. But he's got some great stories. I mean, the Jimmy Quinn stories alone are probably a whole show in and of, in and of themselves. But I know he's got a lot of funny Mike Matarazzo stories. And, uh, you know. John Cena. John Cena. Well, John Cena, he got into the WWE. A lot of people don't realize John was his front desk guy at, at Gold's Gym. I mean, that was a huge career he made. You know, but no he, one in this industry has helped more people attain some kind of fame, notoriety, or a, or a job than Ed Connors. Yeah, you're right. The most generous guy in the industry. Great. Period. Now, I, I do want to say something. You know, sometimes I'm wrong about things. You know, I I was kind of criticizing before the show that I thought it was a bad idea to give Betty Weider a lifetime achievement award. 
Uh, I thought, you know, well, I said there's so many people that are that are worthy of that. I don't know why Betty would be, but uh, Betty gave a great speech uh, on on stage. Uh, even though she's she's got to be in her 90s. I mean, she looks, you know, she's she's frail. She gave a speech that that Arnold was was crying pretty much or just close to it. I was certainly crying. Uh, you know, she was telling a story about how when Joe Weider, the last 40 days of his life, he was in the hospital, and Arnold was jetting all over the world and, and, and going to, you know, whatever he was doing. But he would, every single day, he somehow managed to come to Joe's room and hang out with him uh, and prove to him, you know, that, you know, that I'm here for you if you need anything. And uh, Betty said that, you know, uh, Joe never said this about anyone, but he said if, she said if he had a... Um, if he had to consider anyone his son, he would consider Arnold his son. And I thought that was so touching to me that I realized in that moment that, you know, if it wasn't for Betty Weider, you know, supporting Joe, Joe might not have been the man he, he, he could have been, you know. So I guess Joe's success is really her success as well. I'd have given it to her. So I, I thought that was really yeah, it was, good. It was, a, it was a great story. That was, that was yeah, great story. That was yeah, a great, great story she told. You know, I mean, it wasn't a story. It was just, you know, the, the fact. It gave some great insight. You know, people who know Arnold, obviously, I mean, one of the first things you think of is outside of determination is is loyalty, right? Yeah. And, I mean, that's that's proven that you are loyal to the court. Don't forget, Arnold told that story years ago, I think at the Arnold Classic. He said when he decided to run for governor, the first person he told was Joe. Joe. And Joe said, I'm going to, I think Joe donated him. He asked, you know, I need money. And, it, you know, Joe, Joe got some you know, <clears throat> people together and they raised a million bucks like overnight for him. Wow. It, it, or it was that or Joe gave him the check for a million. Yeah, it, I, it was because of Joe that, that Arnold did Conan. Because, you know, know, Arnold didn't want to do it. Really? He, he didn't. Yeah. And, and he called up, he called up Ar Joe and he goes, you know, what, I had this, this thing, I'm supposed to play this guy that, you know, in the past and the swords and the, and the mask and the whatever and you know he described this whole warrior you know character to, to joe and joe is on the phone with him saying arnold what's the matter with you that role is tailor-made for you right and was he right or what i mean that's that yeah. catapulted arnold from you know pumping iron to the highest paid entertainer of all time and the so, funny thing was the movie wasn't even that good but it was just arnold in the movie that was so was compelling arnold. you know that movie was arnold period the, you know, the weekend was great. You know, we could talk about, you know, we've done analysis in the wrap-ups. So if you guys haven't seen the official wrap-ups, first of all, I want, to, I want to really congratulate Johnny Styles for doing a stellar, stellar video editing job on, on both Friday night and Saturday nights. Actually, all the videos from this past weekend, he did a great job. But the intro alone on the final wrap-up from the Arnold Classic is, is one for the ages. We played it at the beginning of this show, so you guys saw what I was talking about. Um, we... Um, Obviously, if you want to see, like I said, our analysis, you can watch those wrap-ups. But one of the events of this weekend that I love the best, and to me it's special because I feel like it's a special room full of people, is the Bob Goldman International Sports Hall of Fame ceremony, which is something that uh, every year they nominate like five athletes. And it's not bodybuilding related, it's athletes around the world. It's the really only international sports hall of fame that exists. And uh, every year they, they, they induct a special group of people in, and it's a, held in like a ballroom where they have catered food and drinks and all the very special press people are invited only. And, you know, Bob Goldman and I, you know, have become friends and we have, uh, and we have you know, been streaming for four years straight uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony on YouTube live. Uh, it's up there right now if you want to catch the Hall of Fame ceremony. I did, started doing that with Bob because I said, you know, Bob, this is such a special ceremony that everyone's got to see it. I said, it's a shame that only the 100 people or the 50 people you invite in this room get to see it because the speeches are amazing. The, the, the stories are fantastic. And, you know, the reminiscing that goes on is so it, it's great. Every single person that's a dignitary in our sport was in that room from Jim Mannion, Steve Weinberger. I saw Dave Lieberman. Uh, Ruth Silverman, all the people who've, who've, who've ever been, you know, usually John Balick's there when he's at the Arnold. Uh, everyone who's anyone is there, except for Steve Blockman. I don't think he was invited, but um, that's a true story. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, one of my heroes growing up in football was, was Herschel Walker. 
And my right. dad and I would watch him, you know, from... My dad was a big college football guy. We watched him play for, you know, the... Uh, the uh, What is it called? Uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. And then he went on, obviously, to the USFL to play on the Donald Trump. And then he went to the NFL. And he set all kinds of records and everything. The guy is just a, a natural athlete. And not only did I get to hear his speech and his story, but I got to interview him one-on-one. -on -one. Something that I... Who in my wildest dreams would have ever thought that I'd be able to do? And this guy is so humble. He's a Cedric McMillan. He's a Cedric McMillan, who not only is a great football player, he, he was on the, um, the bobsled team for the United States in the Olympics. They took seventh or sixth. And then he's, he started fighting MMA. And he's 55 years old, and he's still fighting 20-year-old guys MMA and kicking their asses. The guy does 5,000 push-ups a day. He never lifted a weight a day in his life. He, he said, I was the original CrossFit guy. I invented CrossFit. I would do pull-ups. I would do that 1,500 sit-ups every day. And to this day, he still does 5,000 push-ups every single day. And he's in, he, the guy looks like he's 30, and he's going to fight again next month or something like that. I mean, that to me was the highlight of my weekend. Cool. <laughs> mine was cool. Mine was mine was watching that video of drunken Peter McGuff. <laughs> now I will say one more thing. Also, Lou Ferrigno was also inducted into the Hall of Fame along with Bill Kazmaier and Apollo Ono, uh, the Olympic ski speed skater. Louie gave a speech. John, I wish you were there. You you, you got to go watch the speech on our RX Muscle uh, YouTube channel. Uh, watch the Hall of Fame ceremony. Louie gave a speech that I mean was so um, emotionally touching. You know. A lot of people don't realize it, and people kind of misjudge Lou Ferrigno because they say, oh, he charges for pictures. You know what? Lou grew up in a household, okay, where his dad thought he was defective. All the kids at school called him a deaf mute. He couldn't hear. He had to read lips, and he had a learning disability. I mean, for a guy in that circumstance to turn out the way Lou Ferrigno did as an international film star a champion bodybuilder and and the incredible Hulk, you know, persona that he he uh, adopted as uh, from being on that TV show. The if you had to figure the odds on that, they have to be better than winning the lottery. And and you know, Louis is Louis is like Arnold, true to his roots. He doesn't forget who he is or where he came from or whatever and who his friends are. And <clears throat> I mean, every single time I see him at at, at wherever, the Olympia, the Arnold, he's at his booth or he's, you know, at the Europa uh, booth signing his pictures or whatever at his own booth. He's got a line, you know, 3,500 people long. They're standing there waiting to pay him, you know, to get his autograph. He sees me, he goes, John, he gives me a hug, you know, and he says, and he, all of a sudden that line doesn't exist anymore, right. you know, and he's talking to me about this and that and what I think of this and what I thought of that and, you know, like I saw him yesterday. And, that's and he and that's that's the way he is. I mean, Louis is a Louis one. He's a humble, cool dude, and he always has been. And you know, he got such a bad rap. And when I, one of the interviews I did with him, I, I I sort of dispelled this. And and you know, Louis has always been a star in bodybuilding and a star on TV. And stars on TV are a little bit different than stars in bodybuilding. Right. And of course, being facetious. So when 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 Louis goes to Comic Con or goes to any of those other you know events that he goes to, th the whole purpose of going there and and meeting the fans is selling your shit. And just like every other you know star of TV from you know Mash to to modern shows to wherever, all of those people, celebrities that would go there, and he would routinely tell me, you know, Chuck Norris gets $150, or, you know, so-and-so gets, uh, you know, um, you know $200, and, you know, whatever, the guy who played Batman, he gets, you know, $100, and he's getting 20 bucks, right? you know, and, and the whole point of his argument was, people would wait in line, come up, you're sitting there selling pictures, that's your business, that's how yeah. you make your money. One of the ways you make your money, they come on. Let me take a picture with you, and you know they take a picture with with him, and then they don't buy the picture, his right. picture. So Louis was the first guy who said, "Okay, you want to you want to take my picture? You have to buy one of my pictures, and then you can take a picture with me." Right. Which to me was good business. 
it offended some people. And then he, Louis got a bad rap. And then plus, he, you know, he can't hear. So in a crowded situation, like in a gym or an expo or something, when you go to talk to Louis, here's what people do. Hey, Louis, I want to, you know, they put their head by his ear, right. which you got to push away from him. He's got to see your lips. You know, it's the exact opposite. Right. That people think he's rude. But that's Louis is one of the best icons in our industry. And uh, he deserves, you know, every bit of props he gets. You know, another fact about Herschel Walker that I thought uh, that Fairfax Hackley told me today, and I didn't know this or I would have asked him about it in the interview, and these interviews will go up soon. The, the Herschel Walker interview and the Louis Ferrigno interview that I did have not been put up yet. They will be put up later in the week. Um, Herschel Walker eats one meal a day, and he, he eats soups and salad. That's it. Now, I don't know what he puts in these soups. I'm assuming there's some protein, but he eats one meal a day, and he's done that his whole career. I don't know how anyone can survive. If I ate one meal a day, I'd look like I just came out of Auschwitz, you know, uh, because my metabolism so fast. So Herschel Walker is, is, a, is a different creature. I think he might be from another planet, actually, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, he was badass. But, but uh, getting back to Lou Frigno, Lou is, is still the only old-time bodybuilder that I know that still lives the bodybuilding lifestyle. He, he eats, you know, he eats his chicken and tuna and rice meals. He, yep, you know, yep. he uses, I know he uses my supplements, he uses species, isolized protein. You know, he, he still lives the bodybuilding lifestyle, which is probably why he looks so damn good. The guy, the guy's in his, got to be 60 by now, and, and he looks like he's probably at my age, you know, which is still under 50, but uh, not for long. <laughs> so, look, I, once again, the reason we, we're expressing to you, the fans out there, this level of excitement is because the Arnold Classic incites that in you. It, it's an exciting event. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. If anyone has to go out and see a show, that's the show you should go see. Because the we didn't even touch on the expo. Uh, we have a great interview we did with Rich Piana there. We, we did plenty of interviews at the Quest booth. All our friends we visited and we, and we did a lot of stuff there. That'll also go up in the coming weeks. But the, the bottom line is that it, it's a destination place. If you want to meet people in our industry, that's the place to go. <clears throat> I mean, if you want to see Kai Green, you want to see Rich Piana, you want to see from social media people to star bodybuilders to legends like Lou Ferrigno, everyone is at this show. It's a meeting place, and I'm telling you, if you haven't been there, book your trip now for next year and get your hotel now because you'll never get one at the last minute. I promise you that. Chris, I want to thank you for all the terrific coverage this past weekend that you provided with us, all the analysis and interviews. Uh, it was second to none. I want to also thank Raphael Noble for shooting some great photos for us with his $7,000 lens that he just bought. He wanted me to mention that. And, uh, John, we missed you, but hopefully next year you can make it out there. I'll be there next year. You guys did a really, really good job. For somebody, you know, part of the team who had to watch it from home, it, it was the next best thing to be in there. And, and uh, you know, Johnny, you guys, everybody did a great, great, great job. And, and the fans – have a great resource in RX Muscle, and um, you know when when MD dies, we will be we will be <laughs> one of the few places to go to yeah. get what you want. Well, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. Until next week, remember with Heavy Muscle Radio. Come on, guys, give it to me. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. We'll see you next week.